Also, my t-shirt says Houston. We have an avocado on it and that's great. Yeah, hey, I love team. My name is Monique. This is Book Rich Reviews and we are back on the floor because we are going to do the mid-year freakout book tag. Let's do it. Welcome back to the Cauldron team. I thought I would do another tag video because I want to and I can. So here goes nothing. I've never done one of these. Obviously, this is my first year on booktube and I just like doing what other people are doing because I have no originality. So yes, so I am not sure who actually made the very first mid-year freakout like video, but I will have a try and have a look. I know I have seen it in a couple of different places, including Bookish Thoughts, who is a beautiful booktuber who I think you should follow. So I'm going to link her down below and her video because she's just delightful. Let's start with the first question. The first question is the best book you have read so far this year. My favorite book this year is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik, which I'm going to put right here. It is not out till the 29th of September, but oh my god, it's so good. I vaguely mentioned it in my last vlog, but basically this book is a... How am I going to explain this correctly so you can all be as excited as I am? Because inside right now, I know I look calm, but I'm screaming. I read this book in less than 24 hours. It is a dark uh, magic school story of a girl named Elle who basically has all of the characteristics of being a dark sorceress but she doesn't really want to be evil but that's the magic that sort of comes easily to her and her and all of the other wizards of her age are stuck in this school that basically kills them all the time. So there are monsters and then there is this one specific guy who keeps saving her and she doesn't want it's just oh my god it's just it's so good and apparently it's a new series and i love naomi novik she has written uprooted and spinning silver and also tamer which is like a dragon series that is set in um like the napoleon war for england but with like talking dragons and it's such a weird series and i adore it but this book is just <sighs> so good Okay, so second question is my favorite sequel. And the only reason why I could say it to my first question that A Deadly Education is my favorite book so far this year is because then I can use this one for the second one. This is the sequel. This is Harrow. She's not out. She was meant to be out in June, but I think she's out in August now. And I'm so pumped for all of you guys to read her. And then I can also reread her. She's so beautiful. Okay, so really quick, Gideon the Ninth, which is the first book in this series. I believe it's a trilogy. The third book, Electo the Ninth, I will literally give a leg to have an arc of or read it as soon as Tamsin Muir will let me. Basically, Gideon the Ninth follows Gideon, who lives on the ninth planet. So in this world, there are eight planets. And then the first planet is where, like, the Necromancer Prime is from. And these nine planets all have to send their best uh, Necromancer and their Cavalier, which is basically, like, their bodyguard, to this one place so that they can become, like, part of the Necromancer Prime's, like, inner circle. And basically, it's, like, a murder mystery, but bones, and then it's, like futuristic but also obviously they are raising the dead and it's just an absolute glorious mess and this book is just you weren't prepared for how much hero is gonna punch you in the throat and in the heart and in will then rip out your spine and like walk away with it and you'll thank her for it so yes this one and a deadly education also they are a little bit alike in the like humor way and i just have feelings about it it's team it's so good i can barely contain myself you could just chill out there for a second beautiful isn't she gorgeous so the third question is a new release that you have yet to read that you are excited for and i cannot wait to read which i have an arc of i'm so incredibly blessed by the net gallery guards lately which is cinderella is dead by kaylin baron is it yeah by Kaylin Barron, which is coming out in August. I think it's the, yeah, which is coming out on the 6th of August. It is a retelling sort of weird own voices, beautiful um, fairy tale about rebellion and female power. And I'm just super pumped. And basically 
This story is set 200 years after Cinderella, Cinderella finds her prince, but it is no longer like that happy fairy tale ending. Basically, any 16 year old girl has to go to this annual ball where they then sort of almost get given out to specific males and people who, or like girls who don't get picked, sort of disappear. And our main girl, I think her name is Sophia, ends up making this vow with the uh, descendants of Cinderella and her stepsisters to sort of take down the king. So basically, I am just pumped and there's queerness in there and black girl magic and I'm just... Obviously, you could see that this tag is just making me very excited. Also, I don't know what my hair is doing, okay? I just, I can't explain it to you. It's not curly today. It's just weird. Also, yes, we are very much lighter blue than we started out, but we like it. So, continuing. Fourth question is... What is it? The most anticipated relief for the second half of the year. And I am supremely, like, incredibly pumped to read The Bone Shard's Daughter by Andrea Stewart, which is coming out in September. That's gone put the thingy map up here and i have heard amazing things from people who have already read it i also have an arc of it it is happening next month i'm very pumped net gallery is not gonna know what hit him because i'm just gonna read all of my books but yes bone child's daughter is like a high adult fantasy about this princess i believe but apparently it's like multi-pov and we have like queers and we have uh incredible magic system where it seems like people like all of the villagers and all of the people are giving a shot of their bone which makes these humongous magical animal constructs and that's all i know and i am pumped and also this cover is stunning yes okay fifth question is biggest disappointment this year and um I don't know if I would say it's as much a disappointment as it's just a book that I least like this year. And if you've been following along with my vlogs lately, you may have seen me talk about it. And it is The Sisters Grimm. I really hated this book. And the more I think about it, the more I hate it. Basically, it is meant to be this almost like magical girl thing. And these four girls all have the same dad, but they don't know each other. But they have different moms and they all basically have terrible sad lives and but there's this place called elsewhere and then when they turn 16 they like remember that they have these sisters and then they all have to make a choice and it's either good or bad and it was just bad i guess like if we should say which one i'm most disappointed by i guess i'm most disappointed in a throne of swans because I heard so many great things from other like reviewers about who read it and it was actually my very first net galley arc and I just really didn't think it was that special it was like fine but I just no mm, yeah but okay just yeah. Hey, next question is the biggest surprise and I guess I was most surprised by how much I enjoyed uh chosen ones by Veronica Roth which is like an adult fantasy not really fantasy, an adult magical realism book it that like splits into different universes and it's basically set after the Chosen Ones have won. So like after the Dark Lord has been like banished and it's all about PTSD and we have a couple of different characters and I actually did a review of it and I'm going to leave it down below. But that book generally just like surprised me and I was like... I didn't think I was going to have this many feels about it. And I am very excited about the next book because I believe it is a duology. So I'm like hoping. Yes. Question is favorite new to you author or debut author. And I is The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. And she writes middle grade, but very magically middle grade. And I am actually super excited about picking up more of her books. I have her other book, The Girl Who Speaks Bear, which I'm super excited about reading because this was just a stunning little piece of literature. Honestly, this is about the granddaughter of Baba Yaga who just wants to live a normal life. And instead, she obviously lives in this house with chicken legs that moves around and like has to take care of souls and... Her grandmother is trying to teach her and she doesn't really want to be taught because she just wants to live a normal life. And then things ensue and the house has its own like personality and it's just so, so incredibly cute. And also I just love this cover a whole lot. Yes. Also, thank you to Moon who sent this to me because you are delightful and cute. And I'm going to leave uh, their Twitter account down below because yes.
Okay, so who uh, the next question is, who is your new favorite fictional crush? And I'm going to have to say it's Sid from A Midnight Lie by Maru Rakowski, because this book also absolutely took me by storm and surprise. It is a like fantasy, queer, female, female romance thing about this girl who lives in a world that is like separated into classes and basically the class that she is in they have no color they have no rights basically and like the other people or the other nobility basically just like ruins them and Sid is this like gender non-conforming beautiful person who comes from the outside and it's just kind of like you know what this isn't how it should be the upper class has magic do you want magic and i'm like yes Sid, i want magic and i also want you to woo me so yes you should also pick up this book because it's just it's funny and i was surprised about how much i liked it and it was just it was really okay next question is favorite new character and i'm gonna have to say that it's lady hotspur in lady hotspur because she's just a magnificent human being and she actually reminds me a little bit of Alana from the Song of the Lioness by Tamara Pierce which is one of my all-time favorite authors but yes this stunner is just mm, okay so this book I believe is um a retelling of like a Shakespeare play I think it might be Henry V or Henry VIII or something else people keep mentioning it and I don't actually know but this is a beautiful magnificent gay incredibly adult fantasy book about these three women and their lives that are intertwined and I like I had a video vlog about it I'm gonna leave it down below I might even do an actual review of this book because I just generally adored it but Lady Hotspur and Hal are both two of my new all-time favorite characters because they are just flawed and amazing and I just I can't with how much I love them also they're both female knights what more do you want team nothing you want nothing more than that Okay, next question is a book that made me cry. And um, I'm pretty sure anyone who likes Sarah J Maas and who read Crescent City, which is also named The House of Earth and Blood. Why do I always say that when I talk about this book? Anyway, we all cried. Okay, there is a specific like line and character death in here. And it literally made me like cry intensely. I did a reading vlog of reading this book, which I'm also going to link down below. My box is as always just full of stuff that came out dirtier than I was meant to. Basically, this is Sarah J Maas's new adult urban fantasy book. We follow Bryce Quinlan, who is half human, half fae in this world where magical creatures exist and live in this big city called, like it's called Luminaire or Luminurse or Lumi something. What are you called? What are ya? Lunathon. Lunathion. Lunathy blah blah. Also, look at this map. Okay, so Lunathion, also aptly named Crescent City, is basically this place where there are angels and shifters and fae and humans and all these fractions are split into houses. And Bryce Quinlan loses someone very close to her very early on in the book and it changes her life. And basically, many years later, there's a new murder investigation going on and she meets like this angel and it's all intense and beautiful. And I love this book and it made me cry also very 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 much okay. okay next question god this video is gonna be long you all gonna enjoy it though who ready for mid-year stuff next up is a book that made me happy and i couldn't pick between these two okay so this is queen of coins and whispers by helen cochran which is a debut female female own voices stunning book about a um young girl who takes over the throne of this bankrupt kingdom and she makes a young nobleswoman a her spy master and then there are fields and there's no like magic in this book but there's like political intrigue and so much longing and it's just stunning and i want the final book because this is an arc that my friend Jack sent to me because he's delightful. And another book that also made me incredibly happy and excited and just mm, yay is Tamara by Naomi Nomi. Is Naomi. But 
what Tamir by Naomi Novik which is a historical fantasy about dragons being a part of the Napoleon war and we have Lawrence who used to be this navy man and he connects with the, with this dragon called Tamir and these dragons talk and they are massive and they're basically like war weapons and it's just weird and wonderful and I am going to read the rest of the series because I think there's like nine books or ten I don't know I think I have five of them I have the next two and then I might have one without and then yeah but this both of these made me super happy for very different reasons and I just think that you should read them and the most beautiful book bought and I have actually bought quite a few really beautiful books but I do especially want to talk about this one so this is the fairy loot edition of Girl Serpent Fawn by Melissa Bassadout Bash Bash her doust Melissa Bash her doust which is a female female uh, Persian inspired retelling of Mike not entirely sure which fairy tale this is a retelling of but what is the most beautiful is this dust jacket which i can't get over okay let's talk about this it's just so stunning i can't and also i really like this cute gray but i guess another one that's like under the dust jacket beautiful would be is the owl crate edition of ruthless guards because i just can't with the underside of this also more behind art i can't and it basically says king of moths king of blood king of horrors and i can't wait for what's it called divine something divine monsters divine something i can't remember the cover is here this is the trilogy it's coming out i'm very excited okay we are almost at the end which is the last question is six books that you are hoping to read before the end of the year i've got a little stack okay this is the stack this is the babies that we are hoping to read before the end of the year okay so one is a darker shade of magic by we swap and by this book i mean the entire series because i want to read this series so badly and it keeps not getting onto my tbr and i just i i want to read it it's just mm, yes this is about like a peculiar coat and four different kinds of london and i think there's like a pirate girl i'm not entirely sure i know there are queer characters in here i'm very pumped next up is also another series that i hope to read which is the bear and the nightingale by Catherine arden which is like a high fantasy adult fantasy series that is very like i think it's a coming to coming no, i think it's a coming of age series which I'm just like pumped for. I know it's Russian inspired and we follow one girl called like Vasya, Vasha, Vasha, as she grows up in this little village where she can see these spirits and talk to them. And then her father remarries and he remarries a very like religious woman who brings in a priest to this village, which means that these little spirits are no longer um given like thanks which means that evil is coming or something like that and i'm just i'm very pumped about this book because one of my favorites love it and i've heard so many great things about it next up i really want to read a phoenix first must burn a phoenix first must burn obviously i can read really well this is a combination of um, black girl magic short stories by own voices authors. It is edited by Patrice Cadwell. I'm super pumped. It's like, I think it's, it's like magical realism, sci-fi and possibly some fantasy in here, but it's all about black girls and I'm just pumped and this cover is just so beautiful stop is a book that i have had for way too long that i have not read yet and that is kingdom of souls by rena baron this is an oh god this is an arc that i got given at yalk last year i can't believe yalk is cancelled this year i'm so sad but yes this is a um south african i believe inspired fantasy i have read part of it and then i just ended up putting it down and i didn't pick it up again and i'm actually quite sad but i know that the second book is coming out and this cover is like stunning and basically we're following this girl who 
Oh, it's a West African inspired world of blood magic and deadly legend where one girl must sacrifice her life year by year to gain the power she needs to save her people. And I don't know why I put it down, but I also just love this edition. I just love some arcs, okay? This is just, yes, okay. And I must read it before the end of the year. Next up is Dread Nation, which I've only just found out about by Justina Ireland, which is like a post-apocalyptic zombie world where these black girls are taught to be soldiers as so that they can like protect the nobility. And one such girl comes out of this like combat school and all hell breaks loose. And I believe there's queer rep. The second book, Deathless Divide, came out this year and I must have it. And I'm just dis covers are just to die for and last but not least i must must read tess of the road by rachel hartman which is a book that i have wanted to own for years i read uh, rachel hartman's seraphina like years and years and years ago and got rid of it because of some reason it was a weird dragon book but basically this like book follows uh, a girl who i believe is a princess who decides that she doesn't want to follow the path that people have set out for her so she cuts her hair short and uh, she cuts her hair short and starts walking and basically it's just like this weird like beautiful stunning i can't with the underside look at this blue it's so beautiful and then uh, dragons and also this is one of my favorite covers Okay, this is just, I am a cover hoe and I do what I want. So yes, that is it. That is the mid-year freak out tag. I thought there would be more freaking out involved, but I guess me just generally talking about books is me having a freak out. But yeah, that was it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's just so I can feel the love. And then there's also a little bell that you can click. It will ding whenever I put up a video. You get a notification. There's no FOMO for you. No FOMO for me. And it'll all be great. And then um, let me know down below if you have done this tag. I'd love to see your video. Or if you want to watch it. And then that this is me tagging you. I don't know if people are actually tagging in this thing. I don't know. Do the thing. We're going to have a lovely time. Take care of yourself. Remember to continue to wash your hands. Wear a mask. Make yourself smarter about the incredibly important movements that are going on in the world right now. And then I will speak to you very soon. I am proud of you. You are doing great. I love you. Goodbye. Where are you? Uh, 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 um, bum, 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 b